نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم respected imam brothers and sisters here at Masjid Al Husna in the area of Sunway Pyramid of Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh It is the month of Shabbat A few days ago we commemorated the end of the month of Rajab and we recall the journey the miraculous journey of Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam the video of the Al-Isra wal-Mi'raj and our topic tonight is connected with Al-Isra wal-Mi'raj our topic is riba and the economic degradation of the Ummah the world of Islam riba and when Burak took him up into the Samawat or the parallel universes and he was greeted by the angels he was greeted by the but there was one angel who would not smile. MashaAllah, the Malay people in Malaysia and Indonesia, they have the sweetest smile of all. Not like the smile of an American politician. So, <laughs> this one would not smile. Who is he? Jibra'il alayhi salam said that's money, the keeper of Jannah. He says, can I take a look at Jannah? Jibra'il alayhi salam does not have to say to Malik, would you be so kind as to allow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to look into Jannah? No. The Quran says about Jibra'il alayhi salam, Muta'in thanna ameen. He gives an obey, he gives an order, you got to obey. So he removes the cover of Jahannam and the flames leap out. And when they had subsided, Nabi Muhammad alayhi salam looked down into Jahannam. And among the things he saw were this. He saw some men with pot bellies, which were transparent. You could see through the bellies. And in their bellies there were snakes. Who are these men? He asked. And Jibra'il alayhi salam replied and said, These are the men who consumed riba. And that is our topic. And so riba is something that takes you into Jahannam. But that's not all. In Jahannam, you have snakes inside your body. What is the bahasa for snake, Jamal? Ula. 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 In your belly. Ula. That's terrible. He also saw something else which pertains to Akhir al -Zaman. It's not only that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending a message in Isra and Mi'raj that in Akhirul Zaman you're going to be inundated with riba but something else a second weapon he saw some men sitting at a table with two plates of food in front of them meat 
This one, nice meat, fresh meat, well cooked, with a nice smell. That one, rotten meat, with maggots in it, smelling bad. And the men were eating the rotten meat, and they were not touching the good, the nice meat. Who are these men? He asked. Allah in his wisdom is sending a message but he is using men, he is not using women in his kindness, in his kindness and in his grace he is using men. Who are these men? And Jibra'il Islam says these are the men who left the wives, he didn't say wife, he said wives. But Allah had made halal for them and went to women who were not their wives. This was haram. This was halal. You go the road of haram when you go with lust. Lust. And so in Akhir al Zaman, we not only have an explosion of riba consuming us. But in Akhir Zaman we will also have a sexual revolution in which lust will destroy. No. The minute you take the road of riba, of zina, sorry. The minute you take the road of zina, no is lost and you will live in darkness. What a nice introduction <laughs> to our subject of riba, that it has a sister called lust. And these are the two most formidable weapons being used by the mastermind of Akhirul Zaman. Who is the, the mastermind of Akhirul Zaman? Answer? Al Masih al Dajjal. The age of Al Masih al Dajjal would be the age of Kathrat al Riba, said Nabi Muhammad. And so if you see Riba all around you, and you can still go back home and eat your Nasi Biryani and go to sleep very comfortably, something is wrong with the heart. <laughs> Something is wrong. And if you can see the sexual revolution all around you, consuming and destroying all that is beautiful in the male-female relationship, and you can still go back home and have your nasty biryani and go to sleep, something is wrong. Something is wrong. What is riba? That it is such a terrible thing in the hands of the Jah. He wants to rule the world. That is his objective. To establish his rule over the world. And therefore to establish the rule of the state of Israel over the world. And he uses riba as a weapon to achieve his rule over the world. The Prophet says Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the Dajjal will come with a mountain of bread. Khubz. A mountain of bread. Khubz. And people will follow him for his bread. He said that the Dajjal will pass by people and they will follow him. And he'll cause the rain to fall. And these people will be prosperous. And he'll pass by another people. I think in one of those. And they will not follow the job. And he will stop the rain from falling. And these people 
would be reduced to miserable poverty. So when the child uses the weapon of riba, the world is going to witness a mysterious transfer of wealth. Wealth flowing in one direction and wealth flowing out of the other. So it's time to put on the thinking cap and for us to recall that Allah sent down the Quran Allah sent the Quran to a people who would think not cattle thinking people and fikr is not just thinking fikr is to think things out what is riba the definition of riba is to be located in the Quran and in the very last revelation to come down in the Quran the very last after this no more on the authority of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu and recorded in the Sahih of Imam al-Bukhari. The last revelation to come down was the revelation on riba in Surah Al-Baqarah 279 to 80 to 81. In which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Ba'da wa'udhu billahi min al-shaytan al-rajim Ya ayyuhal ladhina aman Ittakullah wa dharu ma maqiya min al-riba in kuntu mu'mini Wa illam tafa'alu fa'adhanu bihaqbi min Allahi wa rasuli O you who have faith in Allah Fear Allah And give up, give up what remains Of your demand for riba If you are in need and if you do not do so, then take notice of a declaration of war from Allah and His Messenger. Nowhere in the Quran would you find language like this except here. But then the verse goes on to say, Why took to but if you turn away from riba, listen carefully. For lakum ruusu amwalikum, rasul mal. You are written, you are entitled. If you turn away from riba, you are entitled to the return of rasul mal. Rasul mal, the principal sum. What is Allah talking about? You don't need a PhD to understand. He's speaking about a loan which was given. The amount which was lent is the principal sum, Rasul Mal. But it was lent on the basis of an agreement that it would be returned with an additional amount. That additional amount Today is called a very interesting term, isn't it? They call it interest. Very interesting. They call it interest. <laughs> that, that, that additional sum is riba. When you have to wait for your money to come to you then you are entitled to compensation says Dajjal the money has a time value I hope we don't have any bankers here tonight because they will be very uncomfortable money has a time value and if I have to wait for my money 
I am entitled to be compensated. So money can grow over time. Like a woman can make a baby. All by herself. No, says Aristotle. Aristotle? Oh, he came long before Muhammad Aristotle. Aristotle was a Greek philosopher. And Aristotle in his Nicomanian Ethics, a book which we had to study when we studied philosophy for the master's degree. Aristotle says that money is not like a woman. <laughs> money cannot grow over time. So this is not a new subject. Even the Greek knew it 4,000 years ago. And so riba is the additional amount that you will collect on the basis of a contract or an agreement where a month, an amount of money is to be returned to you over a certain period of time. That additional amount is riba. But it has to be a contract involving money. Money being lent. So we have a problem now. We have to define what is money. Because the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that when a transaction involves the exchange, listen carefully. When a transaction involves the exchange of gold for gold or silver for silver or wheat for wheat or barley for barley or dates for this, or salt for salt. Once it is like for like, on both sides of the transaction they is gold, then it must be equal. If I have one dinar on this side, I must have one dinar on this side, no matter how much time it is. And secondly, he said it must be hand to hand. In other words, financial transactions involving an exchange of money for money, provided it is the same money, it cannot be credit. Haram. It must be a cash transaction. I wonder if the banker ever read <laughs> what the Prophet said. From this we know what is money. From this we know what is money. Do you know about the incident when Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu came to the Prophet والسلام, with some dates, Qurma. And he offered some dates to the Prophet. The Prophet said, Bilal, these are very high quality dates. Where did you get them? He said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I had two Sa'a, let's use kilogram. Nobody uses sa'a anymore. At mud. I had two kilograms of inferior quality dates, or ma. Two kilograms. And I exchanged them for this one kilogram of superior quality dates. The two kilograms were worth 
10 ringgits each, so 20 ringgits in value. And this one kilogram was worth 20 ringgits. So in value, it was the same. Bilal, said the Prophet, this is the essence of riba. This is the essence of riba. An unequal exchange of dates. What you should have done was to sell the two kilograms and take that money and buy the one kilogram. But to exchange dates for dates unequally was riba. Why? The answer is here. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu exchanged one camel for four. No riba, no haram. You can have an unequal exchange of camels. No problem. But you cannot have an unequal exchange of dates. Kurma. Why? 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 The answer is that. Namely, that money in Islam is <laughs> so easy. Why can't they understand it? Money in Islam is either precious metals, gold and silver. Or, when gold and silver are in short supply, then as a temporary measure, money can be commodities of food consumption, like wheat and barley and dates and salt. And in the island of Java, it would be not nasi, because nasi is when you cook it. The raw one is baras. But baras, baras. Rice. <laughs> Rice. Huh? And in the island of Cuba, you know Fidel Castro? You know he stops smoking cigars, huh? So don't tell me tobacco. In the island of Cuba, what would it be? Gula, sugar. <laughs> huh? So articles of food consumption, which are in abundant supply in the market, and which have a shelf life. Not like mangoes. You can't use mangoes as money, can you? Because the mangoes are rough. You can't use animals as money, can you? Because the animals can die. This is money in Islam. In every single instance in Islam, whether it be gold and silver, dinar and dirham, or whether it be articles of food consumption like dates, kurma, in every instance, listen carefully. Money in Islam had intrinsic value. Intrinsic value. The value of the money was inside the money. The value of the money was created by Allah, not by the International Monetary Fund, not by a Judeo-Christian Zionist Alliance, not by the Jan. Where are the ulama of Islam? I am not being disrespectful. No! This is not disrespect. When I ask the question, where are the ulama of Islam? 
This is the age when we need the best ulama of all. Because this is the age of the greatest trials of all. Because the fitna of the Dajjal will be the greatest fitna that mankind will ever experience. From the time of Adam to the last day. So this is the age when we need the greatest ulama of all. And we have to ask sorrowfully with tears in our eyes and tears in our hearts. Where are the ulama of Islam? This is money. And the definition of riba therefore would be a transaction involving an exchange of money. The same money. The same money. And it must be an equal if it is not equal, then the extra amount would be revived. Why has Allah prohibited revived? In answering that question, we we'll begin to understand the degradation of the world of Islam today. Let us go to the Quran. In answering or in studying any subject in Islam, don't go to history books first. No! Don't go to the Hadith first. No! Always go first of all to the Book of Allah. And when you go to the Book of Allah, don't go as a schoolboy with a schoolboy methodology yeah. and take one single verse of the Quran and from that one single verse you derive your meaning oh worse than that one single word one word they slept for 300 years was dead with this heart. and some had nine 309 years. Where? In the cave. Which surah? Suratul Kahf. And then Allah woke them up. It's a test. It tests pertaining to evaluating time. What is time? When they woke up, they asked each other, how long have we been here? <laughs> and one of them said, maybe a day or part of the day. But if you have been sleeping for 300 years, when you wake up, you're going to be very hungry. So they're hungry. فَبَعَثُوا أَحَدَكُمْ بِوَرِكِكُمْ هَذِهِ إِلَى so let's send one to the town to get some food, not just any food, not the stuff from the supermarket. Supermarket. The purest. And send him with this worry. Be worry people, Majru. Be worry people. What is worry? Huh? sometimes translated as paper. In the Quran it's also used for leaves of a tree. And so you have scholars of Islam. Imagine that even in Yemen. I can't believe it. Who say that because the, the young man was the young man was sent with paper. Paper money is halal. <laughs> he takes one word of the Quran, just one word of the Quran, to come to the conclusion that paper money is halal. If ever there was a schoolboy methodology, that is schoolboy methodology. You do not do that in the Quran. That is not the way to study the Quran. You must go to all the data in the Quran. All. 
schoolboy don't do that. You have to bring all the data together to be able to locate what is money in Islam and what is not. And now we come to the question, why has Allah prohibited riba? And uh, when we go to Surah Al-Rum, we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala engaged in the process of education. The language is my, not straw, not thunderous. The language is my. وَمَا آتَيْتُمْ مِنْ رِبَنْ لِيَرْبُوَا فِي أَمْوَالِ النَّاسِ فَلَا يَرْبُوَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ The language is my. Even though there is a lot in the language, it's still my. And that which you put out, that which you invest, in a riba investment, then your principal sum might increase, but increase fi amwalinness at the expense of the wealth of others. This is my explanation or interpretation of the higher fi amwalinness means in the wealth of others. That's not business. In business, you transact a business transaction. A business transaction is one in which there should be mutual satisfaction. But this one is your wealth. Your wealth is increasing in the wealth of others. So I think I am right in saying at the expense of the wealth of others. In other words, your gain is their loss. For now you are pouring the law, this transaction of riba in which your gain it, on the basis of their loss. This is not acceptable for Allah. This increase that you get here will not increase with Allah. وَمَا أَتَيْتُ مِنْ زَكَاتٍ تُرِيُونَ وَجْهَ اللَّهِ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُدْعِكُونَ But that which you put out as a charitable investment, charity, seeking Allah's Oh, that is going to increase many times with Allah. And so this verse of the Quran, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching, it is the process of education. It provides us with, or it offers us a contrast between riba and charity. And if you understand the philosophy of the contrast, you penetrate riba. You can see the snake. A riba transaction is one in which your gain is their loss. You take and you give nothing in return. That's riba. You take from Africa, you take from Indonesia, from Pakistan, from Bangladesh, from Egypt, from Morocco, from Algeria, you take and you give nothing in return. That's riba. Well then what is charity? Charity is Allah. Charity is that you give and you take nothing in return. It's like love and lust. In lust, you take <laughs> and you give something in return. 
You use her and you abuse, abuse her. And then you discard her. And she doesn't even remain as a memory after that. A fleeting moment of pleasure. That's lust. You take and you give nothing in return. But love, love, love is different. In love you give and you give and you give and you take nothing in return. Riba and charity is like that. And Allah wants us to be charitable. To be people who will give and give. And when we give, we ask for nothing in return. That's charity. And so when we are infected by the poison of riba, what's going to happen? Answer, Allah What will be the consequence if we allow the economy to be taken over by riba? From this first verse in Surah Prabhu, answer that there is going to be a transfer of wealth. It's going to be a one-way transfer of wealth. Their gain will be your loss. And so if Indonesia is poor today, today don't blame the people of Indonesia as lazy. And if Egypt is miserably poor today, don't say that the Egyptians are lazy. No. The answer is riba is at work. Like um, the, what do you call that machine to, to clean the carpet? Vacuum cleaner. The vacuum cleaner it has a suction pump to, to suck in the dust. So riba is a huge suction pump sucking the wealth of mankind and taking it to those who are supporters of the job. That's the explanation for the financial impoverishment of so many parts of the world of Islam today, including most of the world of Islam. Allah continues in the Quran to teach the subject explaining why riba is so bad. The banker says, listen to the banker, the banker has been touched by shaitan. So sometimes when he talks, he sounds crazy. He says, innamal bayu mislu riba, turns it upside down. He says, business is like riba. What he wants to say is that riba is like business. But because of the touch of shaitan, he turns it upside down. Nothing happens in the Quran by accident. No. He said, Inna mal is riba. Upside down statement. And Allah responds and says, No. Oh, wait a minute. We have a second contrast now. The process of public education is proceeding. It began with a contrast between riba and charity. And mashallah, it helped us to understand and recognize the suction pump. Your gain is my loss. And now it proceeds with the contrast between business and riba. How is riba different from business? What is a business transaction? A business transaction 
is one in which you take a chance. You embrace risk, R-I-S-K. It's not risky. <laughs> you embrace risk, R-I-S-K. You can make a profit or you can suffer a loss. That's business. And when you enter into business and you take that risk, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not the government of Malaysia, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not the government of Malaysia, Allah can intervene to distribute wealth and to redistribute wealth. The market in Islam is a market of a level playing field. The market in Islam does not discriminate between a Muslim and a non-Muslim. It does not discriminate between a friend and an enemy. Everybody coming to the market in Islam on equal terms. And if you choose to buy from a Hindu while the Muslim is selling, you do no wrong. Absolutely no wrong. Because Islam does not ask you to favor your Muslim brother when buying and selling. That's not business. You conduct a business transaction based on business analysis. If the Hindu is an honest man and when he gives his word, he keeps his word. And when he charges a price which is a reasonable price and his goods are good, then he earns trust. And when once you buy from him, you will want to continue buying from him. It matters not whether he's Chinese or he's Malay. It matters not whether he's Buddhist or Jew or Christian or Muslim. That's a business transaction. And so when you enter into a business transaction, Allah can now take from some and give to others. One day for me, one day for you. Allah does not want that wealth should circulate only amongst the wealthy. They are the wealthy nations of the world today. And because wealth is circulating only amongst them, they are now permanently rich forever and ever and ever. And the poor of the world are now imprisoned in permanent poverty forever and ever and ever. And I ask the question with tears in my eyes and with tears in my heart, where are the ulama of Islam? Where are you? Today more than ever before, we need the greatest of the scholars of Islam. Where are they? Allah takes from some and gives to others. So today you suffer a loss and he profits, he makes a gain. And so there's a transfer of wealth. What happens when riba takes place? The essence of a riba transaction is that you want to make a profit and only a profit and never suffer a loss. Guaranteed profit, risk-free investment, come rain or come sunshine, 
I have to get my pound of flesh, said William Shakespeare in, uh, what is the name of the book? The Merchant of Venice. It's the best book ever written on Riva. I've not found a better book on Riva than the British chef <laughs> William Shakespeare, Merchant of Venice. Come rain or come sunshine, I must get my profit. So what Riba does is that it closes the door to business. There is no risk involved. There is a contract that you have to repay with an additional sum. And there is a clause which has a mortgage in it that if you cannot repay, then I am entitled to seize your property. Hmm? So this is not business. Riba is the destruction of the market, of business. And when the market is destroyed, when you close the door of, of business, in order that riba might enter the market, Allah says, "Inna Allah la yuqayyiru bi kawmi hatta yuqayyiru ma bi Allah will not open that door. No, you closed it. The door of business, and Allah will not open that door." unless and until you make the effort to open the door. And so we have now the destruction of the free and the fair market. So now the money lender comes along to lend money on interest. But he doesn't like the name money lender, so he changes it and he puts the name bank. And he's very respectable now. He lives in the very affluent suburbs. He drives a Mercedes Benz motor car. He goes to work in a jacket and tie. And everybody wants to be his friend. Money lender yesterday. Yesterday, if he invited you to his home for a meal, you would not eat in his home. No. And if he came to the masjid with a bag full of money to donate, nobody would accept his money. That was yesterday. Today everybody wants to be the friend of the banker. And so now he's lending money and interest. If I have a hundred dollars, can I lend you two hundred? Can I? I have only 100, can I lend you 200? Huh? No. That's bogus. That's fraud. You should go to jail for that. But that's what the bank does. And they call it, what's the name? Fractional Reserve Banking. They have a knack for terminology, eh? For Riva, they choose an interesting word, they call it interest. <laughs> For homosexuality, they don't like that word, so they call it gay. Gay. And now, this fraudulent practice. I have a hundred dollars, but I can now lend you one thousand. And the law permits me to do that. And they call it fractional reserve banking. But I'm ripping you off because I'm using invisible money. I'm using money that I create out of thin air to lend to you. And I'm ripping you off because once you sign the contract to repay me, that invisible money now becomes real money. If you never sign the contract, it just remains like that, money in the air. 
But once Egypt signs the contract with the International Monetary Fund, the bogus, fraudulent, invisible money created out of nothing now become legally recognized because you signed the contract. So now, these are the people who not only rip you off with riba, lending money on interest, but the very money that they are lending is bogus. <laughs> because you have only 100 and you're lending 1,000. And Allah says three times in the Quran, not once, not twice, but three times. He gives an order. Don't rip off people. That's the easiest and the best translation of the ayah. Don't rip off people. And that's what they're doing with their fractional reserve banking. But that's not all. The very money that they are lending you is also bogus. It's not just the multiplication by 10. They take the dinar and dirham out of the market. One day you might meet an Islamic bank. One unfortunate, miserable day in your life you might meet an Islamic bank. This bogus thing called an Islamic bank. So ask the Islamic bank. Just ask them if they have the guts to answer. For 1400 years of our history, before the, the, the Judeo-Christian Zionist Alliance took over the world of money, we always use dinar and dirham. Dinar is in the Quran, dirham is in the Quran. Dinar is in the Sunnah, dirham is in the Sunnah. This is a part of our Sharia. And now we have a bid'ah as tall as Sunway Pyramid. Huh? We never saw it before. That has now entered into the Sharia. That you could take a piece of paper and before you challenge me, make sure you do your homework. Make sure you do your homework before you challenge me. You can take a piece of paper and print a picture on it and put a number on it and say, and this is money. This becomes money. Hmm? Is this money? It has no intrinsic value. The value of this paper is another piece of paper. But this one has a hundred on it and this one has one on it. So this one is worth a hundred times this one. What kind of nonsense is this? Can you take paper and create money out of nothing? For the third time I ask tonight, where are the ulama of Islam? Where are the ulama? Since 1944, 60 something years ago, the Bretton Woods Conference took place. They don't study this in Al-Azhar University. They don't study this in the Darul, but they still give fatwa. They don't know the subject, but they still give fatwa. Ask them of the Bretton Woods Accord. Ask them about the Articles of Agreement of the International Monetary Fund. Ask them about something called the petrodollar, and they know nothing about it. And yet they give it fatwa. It's bogus. It's fraudulent. It's utterly haram. And what is coming is worse. They don't need the paper anymore. The paper has already ripped us off. Because when they print their paper, it's hard currency. You can't buy, you can't sell without their money. And when we follow them in the shirk of printing our paper, you could take a whole suitcase full of Bangladeshi taka to miss down Manhattan, you cannot buy a cup of coffee. So this is also a transfer of wealth that is unjust 
ولا تبخس الناس اشياءهم The Prophet said sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam If you meet a man coming to the market to sell his goods a truck load truck load of durian you could smell it from afar and you buy his durian from him before he could enter into the market the truck load and when he enters into the market he finds that he could have gotten a better price that said the prophet alayhi salatu wassalam is riba you exploited his ignorance of the market price to exact a profit or a gain to which you were not justly entitled in other words you ripped him off so rip off his riba and the biggest rip off that has ever occurred in mankind since adam alayhi salam set foot on earth is the modern system of money now we understand the economic degradation of the ummah and islamic banks could not raise a little finger islamic banks could not even raise a little finger to call for the return of dinar and dirham no a prime minister will do it but not the islamic bank instead the islamic banks give us this bogus fear <laughs> that a credit transaction a credit transaction can have a higher price than a cash transaction rubbish that is rubbish a credit transaction in islam a credit transaction in islam must have the same price as the cash transaction if the credit transaction has a higher price than the cash transaction the difference between the two is riba but they call it muraba and when they go in the grave they have a surprise waiting for them because they would not listen to imran who said no so wait until the grave what we have done tonight and our time is now is to offer you in a very simple way the guidance of the quran on the subject of riba explaining to you what is money in islam explaining to you why money must not be lent on interest explaining to you that riba is a transaction in which your gain will be their loss so the suction pump sucking the wealth of mankind explaining to you that in riba there is also deception like bogus money and that also is a means of ripping you up and that also is riba is it not time for us to wake up is it not time for us to return to the quran as a primary source of guidance not cnn the quran and make dua to allah that he might open our eyes and help us to understand the quran and use the hadith and the sunnah to help us to understand the quran and when once you understand it be a man stand up with a backbone made of steel i say to you to be a muslim today is a very lonely thing to be a muslim today sometimes you have to stand alone one man because everybody will be for you and everybody will be with you we pray that allah may bless our gathering tonight with the knowledge of the quran and with backbones made of steel we may stand up for the truth regardless of the price we may have to pay
ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم بارك الله فيك يا أرحم الراحمين آمين. Do we have